Hey, Dr. C here with you. So how much iodine are you likely getting as a member of the American population? <laughs> this is a tricky thing. You'll see some data arguing that there are people in the US that get too little. There are pockets in the world that get too little. And yet there are also concerns about getting too much. And there's data suggesting that those with thyroid disease may be on the excessive side. So it depends a lot by subpopulation. And I want to just talk a bit about that and explain some of the nuances. So we see that some subpopulations, like those who are pregnant or lactating, they can actually be low. About 16% of pregnant women may be below their optimal levels. By and large, these are ones that are on diets that are rather restrictive already. They're ones that are not taking multivitamins that contain iodine. The pitfall that way is the multis that do have it often have just unsafe or quite unpredictable amounts, but they're generally not deficient. So what's going on in pregnancy is that the first several weeks, the baby cannot make their own thyroid hormone. So mom has to make extra thyroid hormone, which is absorbed across the placenta and helps run the baby's metabolism. So that extra hormone requires a little extra iodine. They're making twice as much as they would otherwise. And when things work well, uh, an adequate healthy amount of iodine, like say somewhere around 200 to 290 micrograms, allows that to occur pretty seamlessly and no big drawbacks. And because of those, uh, th those groups running low, the overall average can distort and not look the same as what we see for subpopulations. Uh, there's been some strong data about US subpopulations and how some their amounts are very different. I wanna pull up a slide and illustrate this point for you. So let's get this up here. Okay. So what this is, this is the percentages of the U.S. population that has unsafe high levels of iodine. And this is broken down per age, gender, and ethnicity. So if we take a look, these raw numbers, there's, to there's the sample size and then there's the percentage. And what this means, what this points out, there's many ages. Like let's take a look at women who are 40s, 50s. There's a lot of groups in here to where we're seeing half, you know, 46%. Uh, some we're seeing even higher numbers if we glance around, like 62%. Wrong slide. We're seeing higher numbers in some to where, yeah, 62% can be at unsafe iodine levels. And we'll see some to where the percentage that are unsafe is much lower. It might be as low as 39. I think I was seeing around kids. Oh, here we're seeing a high group of 62 You'll see some to where, yeah, 29. So the range is about high 20s to low 60s for those who are in the excessive amounts. And when you crunch all that together, the averages look a little high normal, but not as alarming as the subpopulations do. And the subpopulations that are the highest are really those age ranges, and this is women now, that down in here, that are at most risk for thyroid disease. That's where we're seeing this show up. And that's where we're seeing that strong correlation. And a little further along, here's the next image I wanted to mention. This is from the World Health Organization. So they've recognized that some parts of the world have severe iodine deficiencies. And other places are at risk for adverse health effects from too much. This is an average urinary output, which is pretty strongly correlated with daily intake in terms of micrograms. So a urinary output of more than 300 micrograms per liter is a roughly equivalency of a day's intake of more than 300 micrograms per day. And the U.S. is in that zone. We've got the U.S., we've got Central America, some parts of South America, and Alaska that are in this zone of risk for adverse health consequences. So we're at risk for there being too much as far as our overall effects. The areas that have had severe iodine deficiency, that's changed so much in the recent past, thankfully. The number of countries that are overtly iodine deficient has gone from close to 200 in the early, early 90s down to five as of the last big evaluation, which was within the last seven years. So we only have a few countries left that are iodine deficient. We should strive to have none because it's a tragic thing and it creates severe problems. Um, congenital hypothyroidism, delays in development, which is cognitive impairment. So lack of full mental capacity for a simple lack of a nutrient. But that's the big paradox is that you can have too little, but when you're at the slightest bit too much, we see different problems emerge, most notably thyroid disease. 
In fact, in the US, the rates of autoimmune thyroid disease in some counties that track that went from uh, before iodine fortification to after iodine fortification, it went up 52 times, not percent, but times. So that's, that's this critical thing. There's this narrow window. And it's unusual. It's unlike any other nutrient how narrow that window is. You can easily get too much. Uh, thankfully, now we're not at risk for too little as a population. Pregnant women who are on very restrictive diets are at risk for that. That's about the only group. We have many other subpopulations that are at the risk for excess. And that's what the World Health Organization has categorized the United States as just that, as overall at risk for excess amounts. So the thought there is that it's about having enough, not too much, not too little, but also not having radical fluctuations. So we see that even changes that are within what should be a safe range can still unmask or unleash thyroid disease. You know, I talked about how we've had this big uptick since we fortified. Uh, Australia saw that as well. They fortified more recently and they've seen a large, about an eightfold increase in the last 31 years of hypothyroidism and also Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So that's the paradox. And part of the paradox is because this is a nutrient that's used in amounts that are much higher than we actually get in our diet. So the body has to store it and concentrate it. And that's good, that's okay. But when our intake fluctuated, fluctuates, the concentrating mechanisms, they can go awry. They could concentrate too much. They can make it to where the gland is just irritated and has more free radical damage and disease sets in. So yeah, I just wanted to show how the US, our overall intake is above a safe range. And it's very pronounced in some subpopulations more than others. So we'll talk more about ways to know if you're getting too much or too little and how to go about managing that. And the cool thing is it's a big opportunity. You know, getting it right again can help reverse thyroid disease for many. It can help stabilize those that have had progressively lost thyroid function. And for many, we can see just better overall health and lower symptoms from that as well. Uh, Dr. C with you. I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.